yeah, we'll start right here. Alrighty. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Multiple Dimensions, Part 38, Link. In today's episode, we reviewed the results of feedback from sharing our work to date with other groups. There was a lot of interest and positive reaction to the quadraphonic voice overlay, and we were really intrigued to try to figure out what was catching their attention. Was it the colored lines going like this? Was it the four audio dimensions coming in at them? And the short answer seems to be all of it. They So... We also uh, did a bunch of cleanup of our playlist for those that are not familiar. Everything that we have, um, every time we do a stream, we do a recap of the stream, and then a recap of the stream is posted in Twitch and in YouTube. And our finished work is also posted in a separate playlist in YouTube. So if you just want to cut to the chase and see some of this stuff, it's all there. Um, so we kept working on float, and we are now up to five dimensions. And in particular, we added what we call a, a, a beat line, which is just a simple closed hi-hat. You can, you can hardly hear it there. But it does add, we feel, interest. And it's hard to hear if you don't solo it. So we can also solo it. Beat. Beat, skip, beat, beat, skip, beat. And then we selected where it skips and it beats to correspond to large changes in the pitches of the notes. And then we just let it ride straight when there were slow relative pitch changes in the note. So we feel that it adds a level of um, aural interest when no visual stimulation is present. It is also desyncopated. And then we went ahead and we made new score videos and MP3 audios out of that. We continued working with the animation, but in particular, we researched audio metadata. And you remember this came up and we were very curious about it. So we were able to look up a bunch of stuff to help us try to figure out, this is a program we found in the last stream that can automatically add metadata to our MP3 file. And we researched the heck out of it and what all this stuff meant and why it's important. We we copied all the links and then we started looking at whether YouTube tracks that or not. But YouTube video metadata is a separate thing from audio metadata, which has been around a lot longer. But there's definitely a connection in there because if you've ever posted something on YouTube using somebody else's soundtrack, YouTube told you about it. So in any event, we came up with a standard system. For example, what we're just hearing, we know what our title is. It's Float. The artist is always JN. And the album is the series that we were doing when we wrote it. And the year is this year. And it seems pretty simple-minded now that we've done it. Um, but it turns out there's all these other meta labels that, that are out there. So we really wanted to research it and feel comfortable with it. So we did that. We also found the most incredibly cool thing called the genre searcher with playable examples. We highly recommend this if you want to And, and this is, we decided to call ourselves Contemporary Classical. But this thing is just a hoot to, to explore. Because it can show everything. Every, it's called Every Noise at Once. You can start from the home page. And then if you click on any of these names, and it's a giant map. You know, what does Deep Dark Ski Music sound like? And you could click it. Not that one. <laughs> Yeah, or Cosmic Uplifting Trance. How about that one? That was... And there's just a lot of stuff in here. But if you like, like, if you like Sambas, then you click on this little double right arrow. It'll take you to a complete sub-list of Sambas. And you can hear DJ Mark. That's probably the popular one. Or Marcel. And we picked that at random, but... 
So once you drill down, you are going into uh, deeper layers, and then apparently you can even drill down on the artist proper and come up with a subset. So we found that neat, and we looked at enough contemporary classical to say, well, for now, we'll call ourselves that. So we highly recommend that list if you're into exploring things. You know, find the genre you like, like we noticed Carnatic vocal, and oh my god, we, you've heard us play some... In previous streams, some of the, the Indian music. So what else? So we finally, we worked on the animation some more. And we worked on the kaleidoscope edges. And you may or may not remember that um, these kaleidoscope edges, I'm not sure if we kept both versions, we'll show you. The, yeah, when you, when you, Play our animation, we had to take a screenshot. We've set it up so that the edges vary based on how loud each part is. And the, the purple is the, f the flute, and the blue is the oboe, and the yellow is the bass, and the, the new beat closed hi-hat is the red in the background. And notice that they each have different numbers of total edges. We did that on purpose to distinguish them. It's almost like a flower or a lotus coming out at you but these edges are changing dynamically and we didn't you can't even see this cute this cool blue double valley you know seven double valleys it's it's going so fast at least we can't maybe you can we're going to play it for you and and so we uh, we recorded it just to prove it This is what it looks like uh, after it's been rendered as a as a video, MP4 video. See now, can you see those blue thingies happening? Can you? Can you? Because we sure can't. We gotta stop it. There, there's one, right? But it's going by so fast that we don't see it. So we call that a, 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 a visual optical illusion. And we've had that happen in a previous series. So we thought that was kind of cool. So that said, uh, what we'll do is now play the animation live from, from the, the software. And then uh, that'll bring us home. So here we go with the new beat and the new animation. So that concludes today's stream. What we really like about that tweaked animation is it includes some new subtle things. Like we rotated the figures after they were run through the kaleidoscope. And that allowed us to um, control where the points were showing. Notice the purple point is pointing up. The yellow point is pointing up, and then uh, when you can see the red, the flat is on top. And uh, we didn't talk about not noticing the nuances of the animation figures. Even we were missing uh, that the point, some of these figures were always having a point to the right. I thought, hey, as long as it's doing that, let's make it balance it. Some were pointing up and some were pointing down. And again, 
an idea for next time is to test the animation for feedback, see if people are noticing those any further. Um, uh, we sort of inadvertently played the float from two different systems, one on top of the other, and that sounded kind of cool, so we might explore with overlaying it. Um, and we already talked about exploring um, contemporary classical some more. And, and adding some kind of a six dimension to float. Because remember, our working definition is multidimensional is more than five. So we finally managed to hit five different things that are being changed at once during the float composition. What, what could the sixth dimension be? Tune in next time. Found, find out. We'll find out too. So thank you for your time, attention, curiosity, and interest. Shout outs to Mr. Spatz, Rogue Walrus, and Overly Positive PC. Um, do come back, do take care, do keep on streaming.